In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Greetings, beloved of the Lord. You are listening to Catholic Meditation. I am Father Blessed Ambang Njume. Today is Thursday after Trinity Sunday. It is the solemnity of the most holy body and blood of Christ, Corpus Christi. There are countries and regions who celebrate this solemnity today, Thursday, the 8th of June. Other countries and regions will celebrate it on Sunday, the 11th of June. Thanks for joining us. Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8, verses 2 to 3, and verses 14 to 16. The responsorial psalm is taken from Psalm 147. The response to the psalm is, O Jerusalem, glorify the Lord. The second reading is taken from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 10, verses 16 to 17. The gospel is taken from St. John, chapter 6, verses 51 to 58. I read from the gospel. At that time, Jesus said to the crowds of the Jews, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread which I shall give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who eats me will live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not such as the fathers ate and died. He who eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The theme for today's meditation is The body of Christ is the church. The church is the body of Christ. The body of Christ is the church. The church is the body of Christ. Dear friends in Christ, today Thursday after Holy Trinity Sunday is the solemnity of the most holy body and blood of Christ, commonly referred to as Corpus Christi from its Latin translation. Today, the Church exhorts us to reflect a little more deeply on the Holy Eucharist and the life that the Eucharist gives. The Church is built from the Eucharist. The Eucharist gives us life. The Eucharist gives life to the Church. The Holy Eucharist is life because it is Jesus himself and he says, I am the life. We find this in two places. In John chapter 11, verse 25, Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. In John chapter 14, verse 6, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The Holy Eucharist gives eternal life to those who eat it. John chapter 6, verse 54, because it is Jesus himself and he is life. 
In today's gospel, Jesus says, I am the living bread. That is, the bread that gives life. Not physical life, but eternal life. When we eat physical food, we have life, yes, but we become hungry again and we die. But those who eat the living bread will live forever. And this living bread is Jesus Christ in the Eucharist. In the first reading, the ancestors of the Jews ate manna in the desert. It was bread, physical bread, that gave physical life, but they died. So Jesus compares that physical bread with the living bread that he is. You will eat all kinds of food, beloved. You will die. But when you eat Jesus, who is life in the Eucharist, you will live forever. You will have eternal life. The body of Christ is not only the Eucharist. The body of Christ is also the church. Because the church is the body of Christ. And Jesus is the head of the body, the church, and we are the members. The Holy Eucharist gives life to the church. The Eucharist is the source and the summit of the life of the church. Confer the Catechism of the Catholic Church, paragraph 1324 to 1327. Without the Eucharist, there is no church. The church is dead. And there can be no church without the Eucharist because the church is the body of Christ. I repeat it. Without the Eucharist, the church is dead because it is the Eucharist that gives life to the church. And there can be no church without the Eucharist because the church is the body of Christ. That is the link and the connection. The Eucharist makes the church. Confer the Catechism of the Catholic Church, paragraph 1396. Dear good people of God, when we receive the Eucharist, Christ gives himself to us. It is him whom we receive. We become all that Christ's and we share in the life of God. Through this sacrament, the church is nourished, deepening her communion with the triune God and consequently that of her members with one another. Confer Ecclesia the Eucharistia number 34. This sacrament is called Holy Communion, because not only does it give us life, the life of God, eternal life, but because by its very nature, it brings us to unity and binds us together in communion as one, just as God is. St. Paul explains this very beautifully in the second reading of today, when he says, as there is one loaf, so we, although there are many of us, we are one single body, for we all share in the one loaf. When we receive the body of Christ, we must work for the unity of the church, for there is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God who is Father, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 5 to 6. Christ is not divided. The Eucharist is his body, and the church is his body. How, therefore, can you receive the Eucharist and you are an agent of disunity. How can we share in the body of Christ, yet bring disunity to that very body that is the church? Therefore, the Eucharist is called Holy Communion because it is the efficacious sign and sublime cause of that communion in the divine life and that unity of the people of God by which the church is kept in being. Confer the Catechism of the Catholic Church, paragraph 1000, 325. The obligation to attend Mass each Sunday, the Lord's Day, on which we commemorate the resurrection of Jesus, and on other holy days of obligation, like today, is therefore a vital expression of our unity as members of the body of Christ, the Church. Confer Canon Law number 1246 to 1248. But beloved, we should not just end at attending Holy Mass. How can we form one body in unity, yet not partake of that food that unites us to that body? Some Christians attend Mass, but do not receive Holy Communion. By this very act, that is, attending Mass but not receiving Holy Communion, 
One, you deny the life of God. Two, you deny eternal life. And if you deny the life of God and eternal life, how can you enter heaven? How can you live forever? Three, you break away from unity with the body of Christ, the church. For the Eucharist, that is the body of Christ, is also the body of Christ, that is the church. Partaking in Holy Communion at Mass foreshadows the heavenly banquet in heaven. Confess Sacramentum Caritatis number 66. This is what is pictured by the prophet Isaiah when he says, On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will prepare a banquet for us of fatty food and sweet rich wines. Confess Isaiah chapter 25 verse 6. And in the Gospels, Jesus makes this clear, especially in the parables about the king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son. Confirm Matthew chapter 22, verses 2 to 14. All are invited to partake. It is a meal for all. But beloved, that it is a meal for all, you must make yourself ready and worthy of it. St. Paul therefore calls on all to examine themselves before partaking of this meal. For he who eats and drinks unworthily, eats and drinks his or her own condemnation and damnation. Confess 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 27 to 32. This is what it means to celebrate Corpus Christi. The body of Christ that is the Eucharist and the body of Christ that is the church. The two are linked and connected. If you receive the Eucharist, you must be bonded in love to the church that is also the body of Christ. You cannot receive Christ in the Eucharist and you are an agent of disunity in the church. Let us ask ourselves today, therefore, do I receive Holy Communion? If yes, do I receive Holy Communion worthily? It is not enough to pride myself that I am a communicant. Yeah, that is good. But do you receive Holy Communion worthily? Three, after receiving Holy Communion, the body of Christ. Do you keep unity with the body of Christ, the church? Do you keep holy communion with the church and members of the church? For there is one body and we are all members. Let us pray as we celebrate Corpus Christi today that we may keep unity with the church and with the body of Christ and not only attend Mass without receiving communion, but also attend Mass and receive holy communion worthily. Let us pray for all those Christians who do not yet see the need to receive Holy Communion, that today, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, they will be touched to receive Christ in the Eucharist. For without Christ in the Eucharist, we cannot have eternal life. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Happy Solemnity. <laughs>